what that was about. It's called ballroom dancing. I got me ballroom dancing. Yeah, I'm a little uh, excited, I guess. I get, I'm a very excitable individual. I used to have my 120 divided cooler back here. When somebody sat right here, okay? When somebody sat right here and there was a cooler that stuck way out here, which was my live well, okay, uh, my shrimp well, and sort of a fish box. Well, I couldn't get through. And everybody's always going like this, you know. And it happened on my last four passenger charter. And I mean, there's nothing against that. But at the same time, I used to have this 120 sitting here and nobody really sat on it. They always sit on my gunnels because they're wide and they got this lip, even though some jerk face said, oh, yeah, well, your gunnels are at fault the reason you don't like spinning reels and spinning rods. Yeah, well, guess what? My gunnels will beat your gunnels any day of the week. How about that, dude? Everybody feels secure just sitting right here because I'm not doing any high speed, you know, 25 mile runs. And it's got this, you know, big extrusion here. And it's very comfortable just to kind of sit here and chit chat with everybody else on the boat. And I love that cooler. I put it in the, in the garage here. I love that divided cooler. I loved it, but I'm never satisfied. I wanted to change it up. So as I put on my community page on YouTube, I decided to downsize. So I have more ballroom dancing back here. That was the in entire theory, okay? So what I did is I got me, um, I love Icy Tech. Sure, you can maybe get cheaper, but I got a deal, super deal on this thing. Coupon codes, I mean, just all kinds of good stuff brought this thing down to like ridiculously inexpensive. So it's a, it's a 25 Icy Tech, and all I do is I pull it out to right about there and of course, you know, it's got to have Jetty Wolf insignia on it. And I ran my uh, oxygen in the back because I'm only using live shrimp 99% of the time. And then I went and put a spring on it, just like my old one. So we could do that. It just stays open. And it can sit here and it's not as obtrusive like a spinning rod with all those gangly ass guides. I'm into, you know, ballroom dancing, battle room, walking around. <laughs> That's the name of the game, folks, in my book. I don't want to have to, when I got four people, that's five people on the boat. And please believe me, they want to pile on even more. But max is four people. There we go. I got my long handle dip net. All right. I dip them out. And a lot of times I take this. I take this, get in here. And if you're not recycling these babies and you're throwing them into your recycle bin, don't do it. So most of the time I put some shrimp and fresh water in here and sit it up there and we just dip a shrimp out of there. A lot of people do that. A lot of guides do that. So you're not going in and out with your, um, you know, your hands and people want to grab inside the live well and you keep the live well lid closed and everything. So I got this and I got a shorter one too. Shorter ones really deemed as the pee bucket in all reality. So that's, that's how we do it. So I'm kind of just always, you know, always wanting to streamline everything. So you say to yourself, well, geez, Dave, where's your fish box? 
Well, that kind of stems on back to a video I did about all my Ozark trail equipment that I have. And oh, that round cooler, that Ozark trail round cooler, I took it back. I took it back to Wally's World. And I kept my receipt and I loved it. Yes, it had a removable lid. It had a spigot. It was, it's, it's a wonderful deal. If you need a nice live well that turns into a seat, just like this could be a seat too. But I took that back because it really didn't fit under the leaning post the way I wanted it to. So I just went and for basically a little, I think a little bit more, I think that thing was like 80 bucks. So for a little bit more, I got me a 25 IC Tech instead. Let's go on up here. And of course I've got my, my IC Tech up front. And then of course, Here's really my fish bag, my Ozark Trail um, soft cooler, and it fits right up in here very nicely. And if we're catching like tons and tons one after another, then I won't even walk up here. I'll just bring it here to the side of the console or something because it's very light even with ice in it. And believe it or not, it holds ice all day long. Am I worried about more than all day long? No. I'm only worried about all day long. I'm not going up into the Ozarks camping for, you know, a week. All this ice retention shit on YouTube, to me it's a joke. I mean, how many people? There's only a few people, especially when it comes to boaters. All we're looking for is a day or two. I can't tell you anybody that I know that's crossing over to the Bahamas and spanning in a week. So they need their ice. If you want to do that, freeze yourself like my rubber buckets. You, you would freeze your rubber buckets and you'd make block ice. You'd freeze your milk jugs and you'd make block ice. Block ice is what's going to stay. Not this chip shit or a little cube shit, okay? Block ice. So that's just a little update. But I wanted to share something else with you. I had the Suzuki oil analysis back. Now that video did not really interest a lot of you about O2 sensors and getting an oil analysis on your outboard oil. But I found it very interesting, okay? Here's the oil analysis sheet. I'm gonna go through this quite quickly and kind of just show you what you get when you send your oil analysis in. And it was very interesting for my outboard. It's exactly what I thought was going on, okay? Why did I have an O2 sensor probably go off in a year that it didn't want to work and it got so carboned up? Because I'm not blazing at 5,800 RPM all the time running down the river. Even 10 minutes out of a week, I usually don't do it, but I'm gonna have to start, okay? Uh, if the more you tootle around, like I do, the more you tootle around, the more carboned up you're gonna get. It happens in cars. It happens in, it happened in the police cars that I used to drive in the Air Force, on the Air Force base that never went over 35 or 45 miles an hour, ever. My supervisor used to tell me, in the middle of your shift before dinner time or something like that, go outside the base, get on the highway and run that son of a gun up to about 95 miles an hour. Blow it out and do it for about four or five miles and run back come on into base, then go to dinner. They call that what they, they call that the uh, Italian tune-up, all right? So let me show you this. You're gonna see, I'm gonna try to do it where you don't get a shadow here. But it was Blackstone Laboratories oil report, Suzuki Marine outboard 250. It says, Dave, universal averages show typical wear of this kind of Suzuki after 85 hours on the oil. We're not sure how your sample compares in terms of use, but that's just a minor detail as its metals are low enough to be healthy for any kind of interval. Silicon is elevated though, so look over your air filtration if equipped since that element can be dirt. Can be dirt. Sometimes it's not dirt when you have silicon in your in your oil. It could be harmless sealers though. Fuel dilution is on the high side. 
which is why the viscosity is too thin. Some fuel could be operational in nature, but keep an eye out in case the oil level is rising. Nice report, check back, okay? And I'll put a link in the video description below, just as I did before, to a website that goes through every single one of these. It's like jimtheoilexpert.com or something like that. All right, but this is the kind of stuff, and you get unit averages and universal averages. Okay, but let's get in here to the nitty gritty. I'm trying to do this without that shadow, folks. So then you got silicon. That's what he was talking about, silicon, 42. You go over here, your universal averages of all oil is a 13. And he mentioned in here that look over your air filtration system that could be dirt or harmless sealers, meaning gasket sealers that are kind of getting into the uh, oil. Well, it's probably dirt because outboards have no air filtration system they rely on the air coming in they rely on air coming in and going through a system of you know passages sort of in your cowling before it goes into your engine and heavy stuff should drop is basically what i understand the silicon of course was 42 the universal average is only 13 parts of you know dirt then the second thing was he said that I was getting a lot of diluting. Viscosity at 210 degrees was a 55.2, okay? The average for this is a 55, 58 to 65, right? Viscosity at 100, at, that's a 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Fuel, fuel percentage in the oil, a 5.0, and it should be less than 2.0. Okay, water, none. Insolubles, 0.1. And here it should be less than 0.6. Right? So, it is what I thought. This is what I was interested in. Is my tootling around, because I got no other way to say it. It's a funny word, tootling. But I mean, just going from spot to spot in the river and not running for 25 miles at 5,500 RPM. Yeah, I'm getting probably some blow-by, I'm getting some carbon issues, and in turn, what that seems to be doing is it's passing some unburnt fuel into the oil. And I changed this out at 85 hours. Suzuki and most of your four-stroke outboard people are going to say 100 hours. Not for what I'm doing. I always want to change it beforehand. A lot of mechanics go, oh, you know, you shouldn't be doing that or whatever. I've heard it all. But I know what my issue is, and I know why that O2 sensor went out. So I just wanted to share this. Project Farm. If you're not subscribed to Project Farm, he's a guy who does viewer testing. They might say, hey, test this oil against this oil, and he does it, okay? This is a great guy, a great channel. I use him as a reference, sort of, to kind of get a feel for a product. And he does a lot of oil sample testings. Before he even uses it, he sends in for lab results to see what is in this stuff that he's testing. Because, you know, there's a lot of those snake oil additives out there who claim to do this and this, and compare it to, you know, normal oil, it's not really what it, it's all cracked up to be. He's not sponsored by nobody, nothing. This is totally independent testing in this guy's barn. I love the Project Farm channel. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. That's a midweek rainy day. What's going on? Right now in Jacksonville, Florida. Tomorrow, I think it's going to stop raining. And I might go whiting fishing because I'm chomping at the bit. I just need a personal day. Hit the subscribe button. And when you do hit the subscribe button, go over and hit the bell. That's what's important is the bell. When you hit the bell, it'll come up with your choices. 
you can choose all. That means YouTube will notify you via email. They're going to notify you of new uploads and things that are going on. So thanks for watching. Hopefully the next one will be fishing.